Looking for some new books for 2024? Julia and Allison have some recommendations for you. And now we'll talk about the nonfiction titles that we are excited about coming out in 2024. First up, I have Why We Read by Shannon Reed, coming February 6th. The subtitle of this book really tells you all on bookworms, libraries, and just one more page before lights out. Reed has taught everything from preschool to college, so has lots of insight into learning to read, the development of a reader, analyzing literature versus reading for pleasure. This is a true celebration for books and readers. Author Charles Duhigg, who also wrote The Power of Habit, is back with a new nonfiction book, exploring how we can better communicate and thereby understand and care for the people we interact with. In a similar vein to Talking with Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, this book analyzes the pitfalls and successes of individuals whose lives revolve around having good communication, from CIA officers to jurors, from TV writers to political advocates. This incredibly readable book blends real life anecdotes with detailed research to help illustrate what is really happening in the conversations where people walk away feeling truly heard. Especially amid division and strife, this book seeks to build bridges of communication between differing lives, perspectives, and beliefs. Even those who are practiced in the art of communication will find this a nice reminder of what's important. It is useful for both skilled and inexperienced communicators, showing what matters most when sitting down with others and how to better match and relate to those around us. Timely, insightful, and practical, this book aims to bring people together during a time when our styles of communication are inadvertently pulling us apart. A solid nonfiction read that blends personal development with psychology in a very approachable way. That's Super Communicators coming out February 20th. The Manicure's Daughter is a memoir by Susan Liu. Liu's family escaped from Vietnam after five failed attempts. Once in California, Lou's mother established a nail salon and then a second one, leading her family from impoverished immigrants to middle-class Americans. When the author was 11, her mother went in for cosmetic surgery and died. Why did she feel the need to change her body? Why wasn't the surgeon who'd had other deaths accounted to him held accountable? Why won't her family talk about it? If you're a fan of crying in H Mart, this is the book for you. One critic said, it's the quintessential story of an immigrant's kid, filled to the brim with heartache and hope. The Manicurist Daughter is coming March 12th. And now we'll take a look at some of the historical fiction books that we are most excited about in 2024. Allison has a lot of great titles for us that she is gonna walk us through. Storm We Made by Vanessa Chen is historical fiction set in Malaysia before, during, and after World War II. Malaysia was a British colony and the people of Malaysia were not well treated. Some people hoped that Japan's promise of Asia for Asians would mean a temporary Japanese occupation followed by independence. In that hope, Sicily works as a spy for the Japanese. But as the Japanese start to lose the war, what will the repercussions be for Sicily and her family? This book follows several characters as they endure the poverty, the war, prisoner of war camps. It is not light reading. I should probably give trigger warnings for a lot of the content, but I could not stop reading it. And even a couple of months later, I'm still thinking about this book and Sicily and the people of Malaysia. This is The Phoenix Crown by Kate Quinn and Janie Chang, part of a fairly new collaboration of prominent authors working together on a topic that they both enjoy. It's set in San Francisco around the time of the 1906 earthquake. We follow Gemma, an opera singer, hoping to ignite her career, Su Ling, a talented seamstress, hoping to avoid an arranged marriage in Chinatown, and Alice, a botanist at the Academy of Science. They all get drawn into the world of Henry Thornton, a railroad magnate trying to establish himself as a society leader in San Francisco and as a collector of rare Chinese art, including the Phoenix Crown, 
which was stolen from the Forbidden City in China. When the earthquake strikes, the women are trapped by Thornton, while Thornton and the crown disappears. Be sure to read and listen the authors afterwards, after the end of the book. It's great stuff about their collaborative process and their shared interest in the earthquake and Asian art. The Hidden Life of Cicely Larson by Ellen Baker is a dual storyline, so it's both historical fiction and contemporary, and it comes out on February 20th. Cicely was an orphan and was purchased by the owner of a circus in the 1930s because of her athletic ability. She's trained and then performs as a bareback rider, touring the Midwest throughout the Depression. In the present day, Cicely is now 94 and in a nursing home. Her daughter, granddaughter, and grandson have lots of questions about Cicely's past that she doesn't want to answer. The grandson's doing a school project on DNA and wants all of them to send in their DNA for testing. In the meantime, there's another family across the country also with questions about their family origins and awaiting DNA results. You know where this is going, but surprises are in store in this very character-driven novel about what makes a family. The Great Divide is by Christina Henriquez, and it's a historical fiction set in Panama, and it's due to come out March 5th. If you love historical fiction, you probably do because you love learning about other times and place. When I saw that this book was set against the building of the Panama Canal, I was sold. I'd never learned or read anything about that era. It was from 1904 to 1914 that the U.S. helped to build the canal dividing Panama into two separate land masses across 51 miles. This book is not though about the details of the canal building. You won't learn a lot of architectural details or things. You will really get deep dives into the characters and how the building of the canal affects them. Francisco is a local fisherman who gives up fishing to work on the canal, dividing him from his family. Ada is from Barbados and goes to Panama to work and make more money to send back for her sick sister. And John is an American doctor who's come to Panama to try to cure malaria. Unfortunately, his wife is, catches malaria while they're there. A fascinating look at how one piece of history can affect so many people and the divisions between all of them. We also wanted to take the time to answer an um, often asked question about when the library places orders on big titles. So how far in advance does the library order big new titles? And while this does vary depending on publishers and vendors, the general answer is we order them two to three months ahead of time for books, one to two months for playaways, large and large print as well, and then digital is actually the day of publication that you will find it on Libby and Hoopla. This helps for our local patrons to have immediate access to these titles when the digital copies become available. And now our big buzz titles that we are very excited about because these are the books that everyone is talking about. Kristen Hanna does it again with a heartbreaking, hopeful, and deeply poignant historical fiction read, focusing on the forgotten women who served in Vietnam. Frankie McGrath has lived in a sheltered and privileged life in California, with her only real hardship consisting of her brother going off to fight in the war. Out of a mixture of ignorance, love for her brother, and personal revelation, Frankie signs up to serve alongside him in the Army Nurse Corps, over in Vietnam, Frankie is thrown headfirst into a chaotic, violent, and devastating war where she builds confidence in her nursing abilities and solid friendships that will support her beyond the falling bombs. What Frankie doesn't expect is the trauma of returning home, unwelcomed, mistreated, and ignored within a political landscape she barely recognizes. Based on real women who served and who also encouraged Hannah to use the real names of places and events to add more historical accuracy to the story, the women serves as a spotlight on these lives in an olive branch from a society that has often saved the role of hero for the men. 
Beautifully written, this story shows the pain, flaws, and struggle of both those who experience hardship and those who don't know how to help them. A powerful story of sacrifice, friendship, survival, and hope, The Women is a poignant story of an often overlooked war and the people that served in it. The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins came out January 9th, and this is a fantastic mystery. It is the, the story of Ruby McTavish, a notorious heiress of a North Carolina estate. Born into wealth and luxury, Ruby went missing as a young girl, only to be miraculously found in the arms of a family convinced that Ruby was really their own daughter. This story flashes back to relive moments of Ruby's life once she returns home, including her going on to marry four different men over her life, each one dying mysteriously from accidents and illnesses. Clearly unlucky and romantic love, Ruby later adopts a son, who she then leaves her entire estate to when she dies. The book switches between flashbacks with Ruby and the present day where her son Camden returns along with his wife, to the home he ran away from to face family members he hates and a fortune he resents. A story of family drama, death, and twisted secrets, The Heiress is a slow burn mystery that smartly unravels the misdeeds and misfortunes of a famous family. This book has a great sense of place, unreliable characters, mystery, and suspense. I highly recommend this one. End of Story by A.J. Finn is a mystery coming February 20th. You may remember A.J. Finn as the author of The Woman in the Window, a huge 2018 bestseller and a basis for the movie of the same name. He came to speak at our libraries that year. A year later, there was an article in The New Yorker that revealed that Finn had lied about many things about his past life, and many of those lies took place at the library event. But now he's back with another book. So should we read it? Should we forgive Finn for his lies to us? Here's the thing. It, novelists and accomplished liars are both good at telling stories. So I'll give it a try, despite my mixed feelings about the author himself. Of course, there's some big name thrillers coming out in the next few months, including books from Megan Miranda, Stacey Willingham, B.A. Paris, and Simone St. James. The Fury by Alex Michalides takes place on a Greek island, and the format is that the narrator is retelling the story of a murder that took place on that isolated island. Right off, we know two things. Someone's going to die, and this narrator is not to be trusted. But he's the only information we have, so we have to go along for his story. Books about relationships always draw us in, so check out some of these books about friends, families, and lovers. Family, Family by Lori Frankel comes out January 23rd, and I'm very excited to talk about this title. This is an amazing book that dives into the nuance of what families can look like in all their various forms. The book follows the story of India, who gets pregnant at 16, and decides that placing her baby up for adoption is the best choice, a win-win for everyone involved. India goes on to become a famous actress starring in a movie that discusses adoption, only to end up in hot water when she critiques her own movie and its portrayal of the adoption process. The book analyzes what happens when the world wants a clear narrative or stance, but the clear answer isn't the most honest one. What unfolds is how the life of one person connects to the lives of so many others, changing everyone in the process. With quirky characters and dialogue, this story is beautiful, it's heartfelt, and it captures the messiness and joy of family, no matter how they come into being. As the author shares in a note at the end, it's not just representation that matters, but positive representation of a variety of realities that really matters. This book definitely captures that. I highly recommend this family-focused read. Mercury by Amy Jo Burns came out January 2nd. This beautifully crafted drama 
is about a family of men, at the center of which is the women, who are the beating heart of it all. The Joseph men run a roofing business in the blue-colored town of Mercury, Pennsylvania, but the predictable future they've always envisioned is disrupted when a 17-year-old named Marley moves into town. She becomes the love loss to one brother, the wife of another, and the steady solace to all of them. The family that Marley walks into is one where Mr. Joseph, the father of the house, runs the business to fit his own pleasures and pad his own arrogance. And Mrs. Joseph, a fierce yet subtle, firm yet unreadable woman, invites Marley into the family while also keeping her at arm's length. A buried secret in this tiny town will test the family's loyalties and force the Joseph brother brothers with Marley leading the way to choose the future they are going to build for themselves. This book had immensely engaging characters, a town that despite its lack of curb appeal became its own character, and a commentary on motherhood and family that was amazing. Amy Jo Burns did a fabulous job crafting this narrative of loyalties and life's choices into a deceptive, redemptive, and honest story of families at their best and at their worst. I highly recommend this read. Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame is by Olivia Ford. It's a contemporary story and also being described as a coming of old age story, coming January 30th. Mrs. Quinn is an older English woman and she applies to be on basically the equivalent of the Great British Bake Off, but she doesn't tell her family that. As she starts getting mysterious phone calls from London and going off to her appointments, her family wonders what's going on with her. And then the baking, she's making so much food and says, well, I just really want to try all these things. Her family thinks she's dying because of the, it, this is medical appointments and she's trying to get the baking in. But no, she's hiding about the television show. I loved this book, and even though I read it in November, I waited until January 1st to give it a five-star read on Goodreads, so it could be my first five-star read of 2024. For fans of sweeping romances with a strong nod to historical fiction and a captivating setting that is a character in and of itself, look no further than A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. This story contains similarly diverse and captivating characters to her last release, Seven Days in June, as well as a dual timeline that shows Harlem in its current New York reality, juxtaposed with this corner of the world's peak moment of culture during the Harlem Renaissance. Ricky is born into the fam famously wealthy and established Black dynasty known as the Wild Family. However, she has always felt like the odd daughter out choosing flowers and dreams over business in perfectly iron suits. When Ricky meets the fabulous Miss Della, Ricky is offered a ticket to her future dream, renting and running a flower shop on the ground floor of Miss Della's Harlem brownstone. This brownstone serves as an anchor for Ricky, as both the embodiment of her dreams and also a living memory of the music, drama, and stories that used to make this neighborhood streets come alive. But when Ricky runs into a mysterious stranger and then continues to run into him all throughout her new neighborhood, the pair realize they may have somehow become intrinsically linked to one another. This is a story of love, creativity, and culture, both new and old. It's a fabulously diverse and magical romance, perfect for those wanting a little historical fiction with their New York romance. And that is a love song for Ricky Wilde coming out February 6th. Some other romances that people are getting very excited about. Um, Emily Henry with her popular contemporary romances is coming out with a new title called Funny Story on April 23rd. It is sure to be a hit just like all of her other ones such as Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation as well as Book Lovers. So that's Funny Story. And then there is Bride by Allie Hazelwood, author of The Love Hypothesis, going a little different with this romance, bringing us a paranormal romance called Bride coming out February 6th. Say You'll Be Mine comes out January 16th, and this is a fun 
kind of 90s romantic comedy with some Indian culture throughout it. And so I'm excited to read that one. And then A Fate Inked in Blood comes out February 27th and is a fantasy romance that incorporates Norse mythology into, into the content. So that comes out late February. And these are all titles that people are getting excited about. And now we're going to talk about some genre bending titles, as we sometimes refer to it. So these are titles that incorporate two to three, sometimes even four different types of genres kind of blended together and merged to create a very unique and exciting title. So I'm excited for us to talk through some of those. Jin Waits 100 Years by Shubnam Khan. You can see we have this listed as historical, contemporary, magical realism, and gothic. It's a dual storyline and it's set in South Africa. Durban, South Africa has a large Indian population and the most prominent family there builds a mansion called Akbar Manzil. But when the father decides to take a second wife, tragedy strikes the family and they eventually leave to go back to India. Now the grand estate is a rundown boarding house. The people there think the house may be possessed by a djinn, but one young girl thinks there might be other reasons for the mysterious happenings in the house. I love this because it left to your imagination, whether the gin was there or not, or if it really was just something that existed in people's minds. It was also a fascinating look at South Africa and the Indian culture. Give it a try. An epic family saga that is a Western filled with elements of magical realism, The Bullet Swallower is a great example of an upcoming read that combines multiple genres. Loosely based on the author's own great-grandfather, this story stars the Sonora family and begins with Antonio, who becomes famously known as the Bullet Swallower for his adventures and crimes. This dual timeline story also looks at the life of Antonio's grandson, Jamie, who in 1964 is one of Mexico's most renowned actors and singers. Jamie discovers a book claiming to tell the story of his family in all its sordid details. And then a mysterious figure who also appeared to Antonio appears to Jamie and he finds he must uncover the truth of his family to pay for the past. This book discusses intergenerational trauma, border politics, and confronting the awful legacies of the past in this magical and timely spin on a Western. Inspired by the First World War, The Warm Hands of Ghosts is a cross between historical fiction, paranormal fantasy, and a gothic romance. This is the story of combat nurse Laura, who is wounded and discharged while her brother Freddie continued to fight in the war. But when she receives word once back in Canada that her brother has died amidst the fighting, Laura knows something is wrong and returns to volunteer at a hospital in Belgium in an effort to uncover the truth about Freddie. There are eerie musings amongst the nurses about haunted war zones and strange supernatural happenings amongst the soldiers. Then in an alternating perspective, readers dive into the trenches with Freddie who forms a surprising alliance with a German soldier before finding refuge with a strange man who seems to possess even stranger abilities. Filled with bo ghosts, both real and metaphorical, this story shows how both Laura and Freddie must confront their traumas and determine what in the world around them is wor worth saving. Filled with plenty of mystery, magic, and romance, this is a great genre-bending read for those wanting a little more supernatural woven into the typical historical fiction read. We also wanted to share some highly anticipated follow-ups with you um, in a variety of genres. So if you've read the first book in these series, uh, you might be looking forward to some of these, these continuing books coming out. So first we have J.D. Robb's Random in Death. Uh, and this is actually book 58 in this series and it comes out January 23rd 
Then we have Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange, which is book two after They're There, and it comes out February 27th. Then we have uh, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, um, book two, which comes out January 16th. And then Sarah J. Mass's uh, third book in the Crescent City series, um, The House of Flame and Shadow, comes out January 30th. We then have The Hunter, which is book number two, coming out March 5th. We have The Atlas Complex, which is book number three, coming out January 9th. We have Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice, which is book number four in this fun mystery series comes out March 5th. We have What Feasts at Night, which is book number two, coming out February 13th. Uh, Dan Jones's new book, Wolves of Winter, is book number two, and it comes out January 30th. And then we have Tales of the Celestial Kingdom, which is actually book two and a half uh, in this series, and it comes out February 6th. So we as a book people, and don't usually talk about movies or television shows too much, but there are several book-to-screen adaptations coming to movies, television, streaming services in 2024. We wanted to point out Argyle by Ellie Conway. Conway is a debut author about whom nothing is known, and yet Argyle, which just came out in January, has already been made into a feature film which will come out in February. How did an unknown author get big name stars into this movie and have it already made? We don't know. The speculation on the internet about all different people who might really be the author of Argyle. But all I can say is check out the book and then head to the movie for this one. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this New Year New Books presentation. We hope that you found some great new books to add to your to-be-read list and that uh, we inspired you to pick up some new books that you may have not heard of before. Thanks so much for joining us and happy reading.